There are lots of techniques for painting in grayscale and then adding color later, but this technique that I'm about to show you is incredibly easy. And because it utilizes machine learning, the results are much more natural looking than the traditional colorization methods. To follow along, you'll need the latest version of Photoshop or another app that can colorize grayscale images in a similar way. With my grayscale artwork open, I'll choose the neural filter called Colorize. You may need to install this first to gain access to it. If you don't have a grayscale image, you can desaturate an image to follow along with me. Once enabled, you will see the preview of your grayscale artwork become colorized. At first glance, this is amazing. It really did turn my grayscale image into a color image. And it didn't just colorize the skin, it included every object in the scene. It also didn't just put a single skin color over the skin, it varied the hue naturally in the shadow areas. It even added a pinkish hue to the lips. Upon closer inspection, you can see that the lip color spills onto the top lip, and the subject's skin color spills onto his shirt pocket. Don't worry, this is just the initial phase in the workflow. I can click on the rightmost preview of the image to set a focal point. Let's choose the shirt pocket. Now I can choose a hue that is more appropriate for the shirt. I'll choose white, and you can see that it desaturates the pocket area. I can click to add more focal points to correct the color of the shirt, but that will also begin to desaturate the skin tones near the focal points. You can reduce the size of each focal point to make the range of the effect smaller, and though the filter tries to keep colors within the boundary of each object, it's still not perfect. The results of the image detection are better if the source image is in a high resolution. Ultimately, it may be more efficient just to take what the filter gives you and then output it as a layer. Then you can keep what you like and fix what the neural filter was unable to process correctly. We'll come back to that. You aren't limited to this default look when you colorize an image. There are quite a few profiles that can make your image look retro or give it different types of contrast and color casts. If the colorization effect is too strong, you can use the sliders to adjust the color manually. Removing some saturation can help your results look more natural. I can also shift the colors by adding blue or any other color. There are also sliders to add color artifact reduction and noise reduction, though it may wreck your image if you use too much. These are meant for restoring photographs anyway. Now let's try outputting the colorization as a new layer. There are two ways to do this. First, just click OK, and the new layer will be created with the color applied to it. As you can see, I have retained my original grayscale layer. This is fine if you don't need to manually correct any of the colors, though you can use a brush set to the color blend mode to make changes. The other method is to check the box that says output as new color layer. With this box checked, the color will appear on a new layer set to the color blend mode. Now I can set my eyedropper tool to sample only from the current layer and sample colors from the color layer. I'll choose a soft brush with opacity linked to pen pressure, and I will paint with the subject's skin colors to cover where the pink from the lips spills over. Reducing the opacity of this brush will help you change the color more gradually. I'll use this to tone down the pink so it doesn't look like lipstick. In addition to correcting the color, I can also add color effects this way as well. For example, I can add in more of the environment color onto the subject. After a bit of work, I can get a really good result. This is much better than the results you might get with many of the traditional colorization methods. And this process is much faster. Sure, I spent some time correcting the mistakes, but the filter did 80% of the work for me in a matter of seconds. I didn't have to create selections or masks, and I didn't have to spend the physical effort to color in each object. It's wonderful. For comparison, here are the results of the neural filter's auto colorization compared to my manual corrections and the original version of this painting that I painted in color. I'll link you to a playlist that'll show you how I create portraits like this in color and in grayscale. Let's take a look at some other images I have colorized. I'll start with a real photograph. You can see that it does a good job of colorizing faces and hair. Clothes are a bit more complex, so the shirt doesn't match the original. But it does look damn cool. I want a shirt like that. There's a lot going on in the background which is out of focus, so I don't expect to get very good results there. It would be a lot of manual work to clean this one up. But still, I have saved myself some time by not having to colorize most of the face. Let's try a painting that I created in grayscale that I didn't desaturate first. 
As you can see, it does a pretty nice job. I had to correct a few things, but it wasn't difficult. And believe me, I tried to colorize this one years ago, so I know how much time and effort I'm saving here. Here's a painting of a full body character. The filter seems to correctly place most of the subject's skin tone and the sky color, but it gives up on the clothing. Adding focal points just makes a sloppy mess of things, so it would be better to take what I can get and then clean up the rest manually using selections to isolate each object. So is this filter only useful for portraits? Let's see. Here is a painting of a ground squirrel. The filter doesn't seem to recognize animals. How about a bee on some flowers? Nope. It kind of tries to make the sky blue, though. Let's see how it handles a landscape. The filter seems to recognize the sky and water and makes them blue, but the rest of the colors seem to be assigned incorrect flesh tones of various shades. Let's try one more landscape. This one I painted traditionally in acrylics. You can see that it makes the sky and water the correct hue and gives a guess as to the cliff colors. I like how it even interprets the moon as a sun and makes it warm. I had an easier time correcting this one using the focal points to recolor the large areas, and the results are pretty decent. In this case, I'd say the colorized neural filter could be useful for colorizing more than just human subjects. But would I recommend it? As a starting point for manual coloring, sure. But don't waste your time if you're expecting to colorize landscape paintings, still life, or wildlife. You might be wondering, why bother starting a painting in grayscale to begin with? Well, before AI came along, it was a really useful way for traditional painters to save time and get more accurate looking paintings. Glazing was, and still is, a really popular painting technique. The other reason to paint in grayscale is that it helps you better understand value. Without a solid understanding of value, you will have difficulty mastering lighting, shading, the illusion of distance, and form. While there is certainly room for improvement in how the images are converted to color, the results are good enough to at least save artists some time. The active rather than passive nature of neural filters is really remarkable. I envisioned something like this years ago, and now it's possible. It's always fascinating to discover new ways to use AI as a creative tool. However, painting in color is a separate skill that is important to master, so neural filters are not a substitute for creating work in color. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more digital art videos like this.